Hello doctors and FMG aspirants. Myself Dr. Sasi. I cleared my FMG in Jan 2023 with a score of 238. And I completed my NEET PG with a rank of 1401 in 2024. With my experience and expertise in the NB pattern of examination, today I am with you with must know and most important topics for your upcoming FMG examination. Pathology it is the combination of our physiology and medicine and in between the pathology comes. Fine. Here there will be a questions of almost from 13 to 18 questions. So roughly around 15 questions there will be a typical pathological questions will be there. Fine. And about this first one which is what which is the microscopic changes in the reversible and irreversible cell death. So what they will do they will give this changes in the reversible cell death and irreversible cell death. They will ask in which of the following cell death is in, in reversible or the irreversible one. Fine. Next one it is what? It is the genes for this apoptosis and genes responsible for this anti-apoptotic genes. Fine. Next, this genes for aging, which is what? Which is the sirtuins. They ask about the sirtuins and they will ask what are the methods to prevent the aging. Fine. And about this inflammatory mediators, mostly they will give this direct point and they will ask which of the following is being controlled by this inflammatory mediator. Fine. And sometimes they may give this slides of this giant cells. Once they give this slides of the giant cells, they will ask which giant cell is this or sometimes they may correlate with some diseases. For example, recently they asked about the Langhan cells. So they will give this image of this Langhan cells and they will ask you which of the following disease is related to this giant cells. Fine. And next important topic it is what it is the genes for this carcinogenesis. In carcinogenesis, they will give this history of this carcinoma or tumor and they will ask you which of the following gene is responsible for this. Fine. And about this tumor markers, mostly the same they will do. Either they will give this histopathological imaging or they will describe you in history. And from there they will ask which of the following tumor marker you will use to identify this condition. Fine. And recently they are focusing mainly on the pedigree chart. Previously they used to ask about they are giving few conditions and they will ask you which of the following is it autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Whereas now they started giving this pedigree chart of autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, even X link disorders and currently mitochondrial disorders. They give this pedigree chart and they will ask you which of the following kind of inheritance is this. Fine. Next, next important topic it is what? It is this. This is the diagnostic techniques for this genetic syndromes. We know for this genetic syndromes. We use different methods. One is what? One is this karyotyping. Okay. Next one is what? Fish and the comparative genomic hybridization. So all of the methods they will just give and they will ask which of the following method is this or sometimes they give this karyotypic picture and they will ask which of the following syndrome is associated with this karyotypic image. Fine. Next one it is what? It is the amyloidosis. In amyloidosis mostly they will ask you about this diagnostic part and the types of amyloidosis. Okay. There will be what? There will be the staining methods and the types of amyloidosis. So these are the few important points from the pathology point. Then we'll move on to some more important topics in pathology. One is what? One is the SLE. From the SLE perspective, mostly they will ask what? They will ask about the antibodies responsible for SLE. Okay. And this associated antibodies and its clinical features, especially the clinical features, they are being repeatedly tested. And in pathology, one more thing it is what it is the lupus nephritis. So they are testing more on lupus nephritis even. Fine. Next about this hypersensitivity reaction. About this hypersensitivity reaction, mostly what they will give? They will give this description of a hypersensitivity reaction. Fine. And they will ask you which type of hypersensitivity reaction is this. Fine. And about this rheumatic heart disease and endocarditis, mostly they will ask you for the criteria for diagnosis and their histopathological features. Fine. And the next most important one it is what it is vasculitis. And vasculitis can be correlated with both pathology and medicine. And this vasculitis you need to study for must it is the giant cell arthritis, Takayasu arthritis, HSP and Kawasaki disease. Mostly you need to know about this diagnostic part. Fine. And about this asbestosis and sarcoidosis you also need to know about the diagnostic part. How will you diagnose these conditions? Fine. And about this lung tumors, you need to know this IHC mark. About this IHC markers, how will you able to differentiate this IHC markers of squamous cell carcinoma and about the adenocarcinoma of the lungs? Fine. 
and about Barrett's esophagus, they will ask you about the metaplasia and about the staining also. Fine. And the next GIT most important one it is what it is the celiac disease. They will give this histopathological image of this celiac disease and they will ask which of the following disease is that or which of the following HLA is being associated with this disease. They will ask like that. And so about the histopathology image of the Whipple's disease also. And just they will ask you the gene which is responsible for the chest. Fine. And in urinary system, mostly they will ask about the urinary stone crystals. So the microscopic appearance and about the types of RCC in the histopathological imaging. In the histopathological imaging, they will ask which type of RCC is this. Okay. And in CNS, mostly they give two things. They can give this grass specimen, for example, grass specimen of this glioblastoma multiforme, or else they can give you this. HPE examination of this schwannoma, meningioma, and the oligodendroglioma. Fine. And without this question, the paper will be always incomplete. So it is what it is the anemia and its type. So mostly from this anemia and types, mostly they will try to correlate between these two anemias and they will ask you which type of anemia is this. Fine. And about this next part, it is what it is the leukemia. In leukemia, mostly what they will do. They will give two things. Either they will give this peripheral smear and ask you to identify which type of leukemia is this, or sometimes they can give you this bone marrow aspiration or bone marrow biopsy, and they may ask you which type of leukemia or lymphoma is this. Fine. And about this CD markers, you should be remembering for this leukemia also. Fine. And about lymphomas, mostly what they will give it is what it is the translocations. They give this translocation. And they will ask you which type of lymphoma is this, or sometimes they will give this proper histopathological image, for example, this statistic appearance in a case of Burkitt's lymphoma. Likewise, they will give this histopathological image and they can ask you. Fine. These are the most important topics from the pathology perspective. Just remember one thing that time is now. So you should make use of this PDF or this video for sure. And if you able to make use of this video, you will able to get your pass mark and you will able to get maximum mark from your FMG examination. Okay. I am waiting to see you with the other side with colorful colors of passing the examination. Thank you for watching the video. Bye-bye.